Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we are now in the shed. This is going to be the first video that I've actually filmed in the shed um, and the first video in the ZX9R series. Now I know there's been quite a few people that have been following the channel waiting for me to start this. I see lots of comments on, uh, on the socials talking about this bike and wondering when I'm going to start it. Well today's the day. So, Obviously, it's been a, little, a bit of a long while coming, and as I did say, uh, I would start it as soon as I was in the shed, and I am. So here we go. Right, what I need to do, obviously, is pull this sucker apart, because this is going to be nut and bolt rest out. I'm literally going to take it back to every component, um, strip the engine, strip everything, um, and then rebuild it all. And I think the best place to start, um, certainly in this episode, is to take the bodywork off, um, seat unit, tank, front fairings, all of that good stuff. Get all of that off, and then we'll see what it's like underneath. Now, I'm not expecting miracles underneath. I'd imagine it's probably just as minging underneath the bodywork as it is on top of the bodywork. Um, but yeah, as we go through it, we'll have a discussion about the various things that I've come across. Uh, but I think the best place to start is probably at the back and work forward. So, let's get into it. Right then, as I said, we'll start at the back and it's good a place to start as any is with the seat. Now, come on, help. The, uh, this seat is looking a bit tired. It doesn't feel all that great actually to be perfect. So I think both this and the front seat would get recovered at some point. Um, as you can see, this one's gonna crack in it anyway. And you'll also notice that I was able to pull this off dead easily. Um, that little lug there is supposed to have a bracket, which is, it comes through here and is bolted um, from in there. And that bracket is obviously missing. So straight away, that's obviously something I do need to buy. Um, but you know, I'm probably gonna come across quite a few of those, uh, those little um, things under there that I'm gonna to need to buy. Um, we've, st we've still got the little, um, the little straps here, look. Um, things like that are still um, present. In here there's a data tool alarm, which I've no doubt is probably going to cause me some sort of headache when it comes to sorting out the uh, the loom, but I do know that it doesn't work because I didn't get a fob for that alarm <coughs> with the bike and the bike ran. I, you know, when I when I first got it, it ran. Um, it ran okay actually, to be perfectly honest, but I think there was a bit of oil mixing with the uh, with the coolant, but other than that, it did, you know, it did run um, under its own steam. So, so yeah, right, so what I'll do, I'll stick these to one side and then we'll, um, we'll uh, have a look at taking some of these bolts out. Now, I think what we'll do, we'll start with the, uh, the grab rails. And there's just a couple of Allen keys to remove one of these. Inside, there's some bolts as well, which look to be 11 or 12, 12, I think. So that's those two. Okay, let's switch the socket. 11. So, what I'm going to be doing basically is taking everything I can off of the frame, but I'm going to leave it on its wheel so I can still move it around the garage. Um, obviously, having a rolling chassis is a lot easier to to work with than one that you know becomes cumbersome. So I'll get everything off the bike right up to the point where um, the swing arms will come out of the frame, and then at that point. Obviously, then I will start tearing down the last of the frame components um, and uh, you know get them all powder coated and what have you and whatever they need to whatever they need to have done to them. Um, 
we've got things like these little bushings here which I want to keep together. Now one thing I will point out is I've got an absolute stack of these. These, these are the, um, the little containers you get from your favourite Chinese restaurant or takeaway and things like this you know all go in there uh, all of them put the lid on and then with your black magic marker just right rear grab rails and seat unit for all the bolts you know and, and you remember when it comes back to putting it together because this could take some time and my memory is well i was going to say it's never not as good as it used to be but it's never been particularly great um I, you know I, I won't remember where everything goes so um it's going to help me out in the long run so let's move over to the other the other grab rail Now these grab rails, obviously they're in poor condition. These are easily um, recovered to a nice factory finish with, with powder coat, so they'll, they'll look absolutely brand new. Um, so they're, they're easily, easily fixed. And there we go, and that is the two grab rails removed. Let's take that little bush out. and their hardware. Right, these little rubber bushes I'm assuming are in the actual factory seat unit. Yeah they are, they're actually in the seat unit. So next what we want to do is find the rest of the hardware holding the okay so we've got a screw there and a screw there and they are just um, they're not going to be Phillips, they'll be JIS. So I haven't got my JIS screws out of the hand. So what I need to do is go and grab it, pull them screws out, and I think I can't see anything else immediately apparent that's holding this in. There's probably some, oh, hang on, there's a couple of screws underneath here. Yeah, two there and two there. I think that's everything holding the seat unit in position, and then we should be able to get it off. So I'll go and grab my JIS and we'll get it off. Right, so JAS screwdriver. Um, I attempted to remove these two screws. Well, actually, I attempted to remove this one. I haven't tried that one, but this one's absolutely solid. All I'm going to do is end up risk um, stripping it out um, if, I, if I try any harder. So what I've got here is an impact driver. That is a JAS bit and it fits in there absolutely perfectly. So I'm going to use this to um, hopefully shock it off and uh, it'll come out without too much trouble. Now, um, obviously, the, this screw may be absolutely goosed, it, and if it is, it's going to get replaced anyway. It's not a, it's not a big deal, but she doesn't want to give up. Okay, she is moving very, very slowly. Right, she's definitely moved, but not very far. See it move, but it just goes stiff. It 
it's moved a good half turn. As you can see, look, you can the, the fairing is now loose behind it. Problem is, <coughs> on a fastener like this, you can't get heat on it because, for obvious reasons. I'll persevere. I'll bring you back in when I've got it out. There we The problem with having to drill out the heads is you do melt the inside, but I can clean that up before we uh, before we paint it anyway. Okay, next I'm gonna try and get these ones out. I can't imagine that they're gonna be any better. Hey, at least these ones came out well. Try this side. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, absolutely spot on those two. So I think that's the only things that's actually holding the seat unit in position. I don't think there's anything else, but we'll no doubt find out in a second. Okay, yeah, obviously I forgot about the um, Forgot about the lock for the seat actually. Let's see if we can get that apart now. Yeah, that's coming out okay. Perfect. And there we are. That is the front fairing removed. And as you can see in there, where I have, where I have um, built the head of the bolt out, it has melted the plastic ever so slightly, but I could dress that up, um, obviously when we come to painting it and what have you. Well, out the whole bike, the seat unit is actually not in terrible condition. I've, considering how bad the rest of the bike is, this is actually pretty decent. Um, so what I'll do, I'll stick this on the shelf out of the way and I'll take the rubber bands out um, and the screws that uh, held the lock in place, I'll put them in the tub with the rest of it. Get this on the shelf and then we'll move on. Right, the next logical thing to remove will be the, uh, will be the fuel tank, but obviously what I want to do, now we're taking the seat off, we can see some right horrors under here. No, I have clue what all of this is about, with a bit of bubble wrap and some masking tape over it no idea what all of that is and likewise for this i'm guessing this is alarm um, related because alarm cable it tends to be all colored black um, to stop the undesirables just coming in and snipping stuff so yeah that's um uh, that's that looks like a strap for the battery which was missing um so found that how it ended up up there i don't know um as you can see this bike's had a bit of a weird life um and uh, hopefully it'll uh, it'll come back to uh, being a good bike again. Um, obviously, this is the, the the stub left in the uh, in the frame from the bolt that I drilled out. Now what I'll do um, now I've got the once got, you know once this under tray is out of the way and everything I can get as much heat on like that as I want to um, without um, worrying about damaging anything. Uh, and then that'll probably just come out with a set of molies or something like that. I'll get that out fairly uh, fairly easily. Right. Anyway, enough gassing. Um, excuse the pun, but let's get the gas tank off. Uh, they look like tens, but they're not. I think they're actually nines. Let's 
to the R10, so I actually picked up an 11 because I'm an idiot. Yeah, there we are. I'm missing one up here, no idea where it was, um, it was never there. And as you can see, these rubbers are all perished. Again, all of this stuff's for the bin and getting replaced. So what I'll do is take the front out, lift the tank up, have a look underneath. Uh, what I didn't realise actually on the 9R, it doesn't hinge. How very weird. Most likes um, you can literally lift the tank up. I didn't look to check to be fair, but that's a bit of a weird one. tap um, the, the fuel the fuel feed line literally just fell off it wasn't even it didn't even have a, um, a clamp on it look that's just absolutely destroyed um, but it saved me saved me the hassle of having to disconnect it I guess um, yeah. sounds like there's something in there that shouldn't be um, there's, it's empty of fuel anyway I emptied the fuel out ages ago not sure about the condition um, inside the tank, you know, as far as corrosion is concerned and stuff like that, but there's a few dents there, as you can see. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. There's a dent there, dent there, scuff there. So um, all of that sort of thing can be repaired. Um, and, and, you know, if you'd never see it once it's been painted anyway, um, this heat matting um, could probably do with being replaced. Uh, obviously, the fuel cock um, will be rebuilt. Um, yeah, so I'll go stick this to one side and then we'll move on. Right, so that's the tank off. I'm going to leave the uh, I'll leave the air box uh, until the next stage, probably the next episode, um, as we start to tear down everything else once the fairings are off. So what I'm going to do next is the side panels. I'll start with this one and then do the uh, do the one on the other side. There's various different bolts in this. Now we've got these horrible, absolutely horrible crash bungs. Now. Anybody who thinks that fake carbon fiber belongs on a motorcycle should basically just hand in their bike license right now because it's absolutely horrible. I mean, what's the point? The idea of carbon fiber is that it's light. You don't make something out of just regular plastic and then put this horrible coating on it. That absolutely looks disgusting. I absolutely cannot stand this stuff. Um, this weave that's all over this panel, I believe this has been put on there to hide damage and hold the panel together because I think there's a lot of, a lot of damage on this panel um, that uh, has been, you know, which has happened in a crash. Uh, this bolt here doesn't seem to want to come out. Yeah, that one seems, seems to be spinning. There's a riv nut on the other side, like a a well nut on the other side and it seems to be turning. Um, again, this is going to be one of those things that I face as I move around this bike. What I'll do, I'll take all the other ones out. These are the little, these have got like little plastic washers behind to protect the plastic. Not that it really matters on this particular bike because the plastic's destroyed anyway. Um, so yeah, obviously this, this is the under tray. Um, this, on this side it actually looks okay, but I think on the other side, the, the, um, the position where the bolt goes is actually broken. So I'll either have to repair or replace it. Um, I don't think they're that particularly easy to get hold of, so if I can repair it, it'll probably be easier. Now, I'm not sure that these screws are actually factory either because they appear to be stainless. Um, and I don't think, I don't think Kawasaki used stainless bolts um, on their fairings. I mean, obviously somebody can correct me if I am wrong, 
um, seeing as this is the first Kawasaki I've ever owned, I'm not sure. So there we go, right. That's the uh, under, the under, well, the, the belly pan, should I say, um, on this side completely off. I'm gonna cover all these little clips. I'm not sure if they're factory either. Um, seem a bit weird. Okay, so next, a couple more bolts. Along here. The beauty of um, the conditioning is fine. It doesn't really matter um, too much if I, you know, scratch something. Um, I'm not particularly worried about it because obviously it's all going to get repainted and stuff anyway. So I can be a little bit ham-fisted with it if I wish. Two on the top here. Okay, I'm not sure that that one's coming out. It feels like it's just spinning. Oh no, it seems to be. I'm going to find this a lot with a lot of fasteners on this bike. I think there's going to be ones that won't want to come out, some that will just absolutely seized in, like the ones on the rear seat unit, but it's to be expected. Um, I mean, this bike's what, 20, 23 years old? 23 years old, and she's wearing every single one of those years. Um, she's not being particularly well looked after. That's what we're here to do, we're here to change that. So hopefully she'll look a million dollars when we're finished. Right, so the only thing holding that panel on now is this bolt here that just seems to spin and spin. So what I'm gonna have to do, I think, is get a set of grips or something onto the back of it. Um, I can get in there for now, I can get in now from underneath the belly pan. Get a set of grips on there, see if I can tease it out. So what I'll do, I'll get that out and then I'll bring you back in. So, panel's off. Didn't actually get the bolt out in the end. What I ended up doing was actually just pulling the well nut out of the bracket at the bottom of the radiator. Um, as you can see in here, there's a lot of grease and grime, it's all over my hands. Um, but on first inspection, this panel appears to be hold. Now, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of uh, this stuff all over the bike, and it's definitely on the side. And I'm guessing either somebody just got some of this for Christmas and decided to cover the bike in it, or the other side perhaps got a broken panel. They used this to try and fix it together and they just did this for symmetry, perhaps. Um, but what I'll do, I'll be careful with this panel because it is complete. Uh, there's no broken lugs on it, which is a result. Um, so yeah, so I'll put that to one side. Um, I'll get up on the shelf in a minute. And we'll have a look under here. Uh, as you can see, yeah, there's a lot of leaks, nasty oil leaks and all sorts of things from under here. Um, this radiator has clearly been in a clatter because uh, there's a big dent in this side of it. So, so yeah, right, anyway, what I'll do, I'll get the panel off on the other side. I'm not gonna film that because obviously you've seen all that before. There's a dent in the frame actually just here, which I've never noticed before. Um, but I mean, dents in the frame, uh, provided they haven't structurally damaged the frame, uh, are easy, easy to fix uh, because the frame's getting painted anyway. Um, it'll be fine. Right, I'll get the panel off on the other side, we'll get the belly pan off, and then uh, I'll bring it back in and we'll look at the nose. Okay, so this is the right hand side panel, and looking inside, I can't see any massive damage other than that little crack there, which has had a staple put through it, and then you can see the staple just there. Um, and then it's just been covered with this horrible carbon fiber stickers everywhere. Um, there, is a, there is a crack in the lug there, um, again, that's a fairly simple fix. It's not actually that difficult to repair that with a plastic welding kit um, and all that will be dressed up. These little lugs here, again, oh, there's another one there, look. These, um, these are fairly, fairly easy to replicate um, and I'm fairly confident that I can, uh, I can actually repair those um, and make them usable again. So again, that's a fairly, fairly good touch with, uh, with that panel. Um, the belly pan, overall is in fairly good condition the only real damage is here and again a pretty simple repair not too bad 
at all. I can probably uh, replicate that lug, bring it round. I can probably do that. I'm fairly confident in uh, in that. Um, but yeah, um, not bad at all. It's pretty clean. Not too not too scuffed. Um, there is a it's like a it's like a slight metallic blue hue to to the paint on this panel, which obviously will be replicated um, by my uh, painter of choice. So yeah, we'll um, put them to one side and uh, move on uh, to the nose cone. Now, while we're on the topic of the nose cone, this is a second nose cone, as you can see. I haven't taken that one off yet. Now, I picked this up at a, like a, a motorbike auto jumble. Um, I paid five pounds for this, you know, which is absolutely insane. And the, the geezer even threw in another side panel but I mean this is beat to death he, he, he said oh you can take that with you as well um, you can see this is actually in worse condition than the one I took off the bike um, but it may be useful to be able to take lugs off I can cut lugs off and transplant them onto onto the previous one you know um, this here obviously it's got a crack in it but again that is fairly easy to repair again with plastic welding um, and overall this one is in actually better condition than this than the one that's on the bike because as you can see this has had all kinds of damage um, there's these staples everywhere uh, all over the place down here um, and again same on this side it's it's just in overall poor condition and I will actually be better off repairing this one plastic welding this one than I would plastic welding that one so that was a bit of a, a good find um, the only thing with it is that uh, the brackets for the headlight have broken off but he's included them you can see there and there they've just snapped off the upper ones are both there but the bottom ones have broken off um, but he's included them both so again it's just a case of putting them back in place plastic welding them on and away you go um, and again uh, you know a lick of paint and it'll be uh, it'll be right as rain um, it's just the fact that these um, are, are intact which I'm pleased about as opposed to this horrible abortion um, right here it's absolutely disgraceful Okay, moving on, let's get this uh, nose cone off um, and uh, look at stripping the headlight out of it. With the front nose cone, I think the th first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the, uh, the screen because the screen, whilst absolutely filthy, is actually in incredibly good condition and I want to keep it that way. So. I'll, um, I'll whip that off and that gives us a better access to get into the back of the mirrors and stuff like that because the fairing stay is obviously where the, mount, uh, the mirrors mount to. So I'll whip all these screws out. Tell you what, it is so hot today. Uh, and believe it or not, it's actually really cool in the shed, but we're, it's pushing 30 degrees outside. Yeah. 28 degrees apparently. Um, but in here it's probably more like 18 or 19, which is still quite warm. But it certainly beats being outside um, and, and in the garage. The walls of this shed are heavily insulated. When I built it, we, uh, we insulated the, the walls quite a lot. And um, it's paying off today because it's so much nicer in here than it is outside. Right. Again, we've got little washers behind these, which is a good idea because obviously you screw a bolt or a screw straight down onto your plastic, you're just going to scratch the paint. So it's always a good idea to put a little washer. I prefer the little plastic ones, the little nylon washers. I'm fairing bolts like this, but something we can look at when we come to reassembly in a few months down the line. Okay, then we'll go in the top. that is the screen and as you can see it's all intact there's no broken lugs on it whatsoever no no cracks uh, a few little scratches but most of that will clean up and polish out most probably but it is a genuine Kawasaki one so obviously we want to uh, we want to try and protect it now interestingly enough down here there appears to be a repair on the headlight and um, well a really really poor repair on the headlight which um, has left a gap in the top. Now I also wondered on the headlight itself at the front um, why it's so dirty inside and now I know. <laughs> now I know so that's going to have to be replaced because obviously it's 
best goose, isn't it? Let's be honest. Um, it's, it's funny the uh, the lengths that people will go to instead of just, you know, surely the time spent taken doing that would have been far better spent looking on eBay for another one. Um, but, you know, each to their own. Some people have different methods of doing things. So what we want to do now is I want to remove the mirrors. nuts and I mean this one's not in terrible condition but it's not in great condition either I'll probably replace those I'll probably struggle to find say, genuine ones of them though that's the only issue um, so I may have to go pattern on those um, but obviously I'll go genuine if I can and as you can see this one here is absolutely I don't even know what that's there for um, the, you know, <laughs> hold the glass in place I don't know um, yeah, again, another uh, really weird bodge job. Okay. So, now, what we can do is we can look at the mountings for the actual fairing itself. Again, we've got the... <laughs> more of this hideous cut fake carbon fiber look rubbish on the side um you know obviously um the previous owner crashed the bike and uh, instead of replacing them with oem or some actually some decent indicators you just replace them with them abominations now take the bolts out of the fairing stay and stable obviously be getting a powder coat to make it look nice again um, so it's surprising how simply you can achieve a nice finish just by sending parts to a, a professional powder coater and they'll come back looking brand new absolutely brand new the powder coat is a great it's a great finish for, for these kind of things because it's quite tough it's certainly tougher than paint and quick and easy and the cost is, you know, pretty reasonable for, uh, for powder coating. Um, I'm quite impressed by the uh, the value of it for, for the you know for the effect that you achieve at the end. Now, there we go. Watch what, something. Don't know what that was supposed to say. Something horn broken. I think that was going to say horn broken. Watch for finger. So I don't know. Horns not working. Give him one of them. Yeah, good one. Um, obviously, uh, the, uh, the previous owner of this bike had a different level of maturity to myself. Um, <laughs> not saying I'm old or anything. I, you know, I, I like a joke as much as the next man, but not really, uh, not really my thing. Okay, so um, what we can do, I think, is pull these clocks out. Now, there appears to be these couple of R pins, couple of R pins in here, which. Don't really want to move. Now, what I'm going to have to do, I think, is get a... Oh, no, that one's coming. There's one. Is that one going to come up for me? Yeah, there we go. We've got a... Right. So that's the, the fairing off the front. And there, look at this. Little piece of aluminium. I did drop a rubber bush. Um, I think there's supposed to be one in there as well, isn't there? Yeah, so the whole of that is supposed to sit on there like that. And again, that side of the headlight would have had something very similar to that. So, yeah, what I'm gonna do now, obviously, is I need to take out some bolts to remove the whole thing off the bike. So I'll go and grab my tools again, and that's the next step. Right then, we're fairly loose here. I think what I'm gonna do is just undo this, this hose clip here, and then just down in here, there's some, there's some pipe work with some hose clips on that I, I'm fairly sure if I just disconnect that, the whole thing will come out. Um, then there's just like the connectors for the light and stuff like that. 
uh, and the indicators that need um, disconnected and I think the whole of the fairing will be off. So I'll start off with these, one on this side. I'm not sure if these are factory or not, they really. seem a little bit Heath Robinson for, for this application, but I may be wrong. Um, so that's that one. So on this side. And there doesn't appear to be one. Oh, yes, there is, and it's a completely different type. Um, let me see if I can get in there with a screwdriver. Oh, because that's quite awkward. Yeah, this this actually looks like a what I would ex have expected to find. Not a hose clip like that one, so obviously we'll re replace them with what they should be. Yeah, that's that's again the same here and here. I'm pretty sure they're not they're not factory. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, look at getting the right parts for those. And here we are. Right. So what I'll do if I squeeze that hose clip in, that hose will come off. the rubber gasket off the back of the headlight which is obviously doing a, a world of good considering there's a chasm in the top of it there we go and then there we are that is the nose fairing off and look more, more of that carbon fibre fake horrible stuff. This time it's blue. Um, right, so there's some bits in here which are going to be good, like the ram air intakes, all of this intake system, they're all good and they don't appear to be broken at all, which is a bit of a bonus. Um, that one's coming straight out. Right, these little push pins under here are supposed to engage in these holes and hold it all together, but they're not really doing their job. And that, I think it's safe to say that that headlight is fit for the scrapper, um, which is a shame because that's a, an expense and probably a rarity. I, I'd imagine those uh, headlights aren't um, 10 a penny, so I've got to find one. I'd imagine a breaker will have one though, so I'll find one somewhere. Even if I have to pay through the nose to get one, I'll, uh, I'll get one. Right, so what I'll do, I'm gonna put this to one side, strip all these bits off of it and then uh, yeah, we can um, then look at the next stage on the bike. Um, so I'll get this on the bench and then uh, let's look at getting all these bits off. Okay, as I said a moment ago, the push pin holding the ram air duct in place um, fell out uh, and the one on the other side's basically done the exact same thing. And here's the, uh, here's the inner dot. Obviously it's one of those kind of pins. You push it in and it locks in place and then yeah, you just you push it through and you, you're able to take it out. Um, same on this side. And, but I think most of this is ready to come out. Um, there's a little one bracket there. And there we are. That's those. That'll clean up perfectly well. Um, and the meshes on the front look to be fairly fairly intact but they do appear to be upside down if uh, if I'm not mistaken I think they're upside down but <laughs> yeah you know no great shakes right so they they're good at least they're not shattered so that's something else I don't have to buy um, we've got this wiring here again more Heath Robinson stuff with tape um, and let's be honest these these indicators are absolutely Right, what I'm going to do is try and remove this screw, see if it comes out. Yeah. Because um, I don't want to, I mean, although this, um, this fairing is in poor condition, there may be elements of it that I can use to repair other plastic parts, so, you know, it's not, not, let's not throw everything away straight away. Um, Right, 
We've got some weird brackets like that have been made by somebody up here, which definitely aren't factory. I mean, I suppose for whoever made it, it's been fairly industrious, but I don't know how they expected the headlight to be, you know, to, I bet, I bet it used to steam up in the winter. There we are. There is the headlight and we can get a good look at the damage that's been caused to it now. It's absolutely ruined. I don't even know. I mean, yeah, that's absolutely for the scrapper. I think the only thing we can actually recover from this sucker is the bulb. Is the bulb working? Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> so yeah, we can, we can keep the bulb um, result. Other than that, that's junk. Um, even the side light bulb has been glued in place. So <laughs> it's literally been glued in place. There's absolutely no getting that side light bulb out of there. That's glued in. So if it didn't work, you, you ain't replacing it. So yeah, so I think what I'm gonna do with this wiring here is just snip it at the indicators because I'm not using those indicators, they're absolutely copying. And there we are. So I think it's safe to say that that is for the bin. Um, and yeah, I'll stick this to one side. Um, if you pull that pin out though, we can recover that because we'll probably need that along with that one at some point later on. Put them in the tub. I'll recover things like these because the, uh, the replacement one doesn't actually have any. So I'll need those. One of these in sit just sitting inside the fairing. Um, these are those like weird adapters that you use to to fit um, aftermarket indicators, but for some reason the geezers put them on the inside and not on the outside where they're supposed to be. So yeah, I don't even know what he was thinking about. Um, a little grommet there for the mirrors. And other than that, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. So I'll stick this to one side on the shelf just in case I need any element because you never know if I find a broken bit I, I can cut a section out and then plastic weld it onto the other one if uh, if I so wish to do so later but other than that that's pretty uh, pretty much toast. So let's uh, get rid of this and then uh, we'll have a look at the uh, at the bike. Okay so for the most part we've got the plastics off the only thing that's remaining is the uh, is the mud guard. Um, I'll get that off uh, later on, it's not important right now. But now we can see underneath her clothes and we can see all the, uh, all the oil leaks, all of this good stuff, the damage to the radiator. There's definitely, definitely oil in there. You can see the separation. I don't know if you can see it's coolant down there and oil at the top, you can, there's the line there. Um, but obviously that doesn't really matter because it's getting pulled apart anyway. This frame, um, these little nicks here, I'm not too concerned about, they can all be repaired. You know, there's no, there's no cracks in the frame. There's no um, piercing of the, of, the, of the metal on the spars. So yeah, it should be okay. Right, anyway, obviously this is, um, this is the first episode um, and we've, we've taken all the plastics off to get to all the good stuff. Um, hopefully you, uh, you enjoyed the video. Um, you may have even found it useful, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, come back for the next episode, guys, where we start to take all of this good stuff off. Again, I'll probably start at the back working forwards, uh, taking all the bits off, um, stripping the frame down to its bare, bare bones, um, 
prior to uh, dropping the engine out. Um, and then uh, obviously we'll get the engine on the bench, we'll pull that bad boy apart and uh, yeah, it'll, uh, it'll start to get more interesting from here on in. Um, God knows what I'm going to find when I take the lid off the airbox, there's probably a family of field mice in there. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, we've got a, what appears to be a leaking fork on that side. This side's missing the dust seal completely, you know. The, the, this poor bike has had such a poor life. That's, oh my god, that looks like it's being held on with a tapping screw. Um, yeah, this poor bike looks like it's had such a terrible life, um, and I want to bring it back and uh, hopefully make a good machine out of it. Um, one thing I do want to point out, when I did the intro for this bike quite some time ago, I did mention about how it seemed to lean over an awful lot, and I thought that maybe it had the wrong side stand on. What I've done is I've had a little think about it and realised that this has got a jack-up kit on it. So basically what's happened is the, these dog bones here are shorter than the standard ones, which raises the rear. Um, and that's the reason why the side stand seems short, because you, if you're gonna do that, lengthening the side stand is probably a really good idea. Now, I do like the way it stands um, with, with its back end in the air like this. I do like it, and obviously being taller, it's probably gonna be better for me anyway. So what I may do is actually just modify the side stand, just lengthen it slightly. I do have another side stand, which I can hack up to take a section out of and then just weld it together um, to make uh, to make one longer stand. It only has to be longer by about two inches, I think, to be perfect and it'll be perfect. Anyway, guys, enough waffling on. I'll let you go. Um, and hopefully I will see you all back for the next episode. If you want to join me on the socials, Kev Shed on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. I'll leave links to those in the description below. Hopefully I'll see you all over there. Take care, guys. Bye bye now.